How would it feel to have a thriving fitness business and have the freedom to enjoy life at the fullest? Well, that is exactly what the Trainer Revenue Multiplier Show is going to give you. My name is Matthew Park. This is Amy Filer. Hey, guys. And we are here to serve. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the TRM show. My name is Matthew Park. I am the host of the show, and I have with me a very special, wonderful individual, human being, a loving soul. Her name is Tani Shear. She is the CEO of TRM, as well as the client experience specialist, and she is a remarkable person, one of the members in our TRM team that takes care of all of our clients and nurturing them, taking care of them. And she is a master at knowing how to take care of these clients of TRM guys. So welcome to the show, Tani. How are you doing this morning? Well, thank you, Matthew, for the beautiful introduction. I am doing great. Yes, thank you so much for having me on the show. It's great to have you, Tani. Looking forward to having a good combo with you. And of course, we crack a couple of jokes to kind of get everyone loosened up on the show, you know, as we always do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's what we do. I like to say something to shock people so that they it wakes up their brain, you know. <laughs> shock and I. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tani, obviously, you've obviously been involved in client experience in multiple levels for many years, probably more like decades, correct, Tan? Yes, many, many years. Because <laughs> your background goes into like what different fields obviously you were involved in before this? Well, I mean, it started with me being like at 18 years old, being like an assistant manager at McDonald's way back, being there for five years to going on to um, like managing a fitness club back when I was 18. So I'm 56 now, so it's been many, many years since then, but I've always been in a, in a place of management um, or entrepreneurship. I raised my children. Um, I was a single mom raising my children, well, and I did graphic design, self-taught graphic designer, so I could take care of my kids in the day and um, be able to work at night. So I've done a lot of things, but most of it, like even web design is really about the customer experience. You're trying to figure out what they need to share to the world about their their company and who they are. And so I'm just very passionate about, about that. And as you know, Matthew, when, when I took the um, Strength Finder um, test, four of my five pillars ended up being about connection. So it totally makes sense. <laughs> Also, your background, Tanmeister, as well, you know, it goes back into also being in the hotel industry for many years, like taking care of like also managing hotel chains, correct? Not chains, but um, I did like I worked at one hotel where I did a lot of different things. I was the assistant to the general manager. And then I ended up working in sales and catering, helping people with weddings and events. And, you know, um, so, yeah, I've always been in that industry where and I'd say one of the things I love the most besides the client experience is the employee experience. So I really believe in laughing, having fun, but working hard. You know, it's like, let's hit our goals, but let's do it and have fun. You know, that's sort of what I'm known for. When you'd walk into the hotel, you'd always hear me laughing. You know, it, it's like that. And, you know, even at one time, um, the manager of the hotel said, I've never had anyone get more um, presents and cards and somebody wrote an article in the newspaper to thank me for my you know for my help with their wedding and he's like how do you like how do you get so much of that I go I just treat the client like with the most respect and and I'm there like you know I'll hang around but it's with my employees that I really I really love to support them and like at the hotel it's it's challenging because sometimes we had police incidents sometimes we had things going on I would stay with my front desk staff if there was an incident I don't want you know two young people staying at the front at 11 o'clock at night when we have something going on so there's so I always believe in supporting the staff and and often and really understanding what they need, what they want and how they can thrive. Because when your staff is loving what they do and when you're getting them to do the jobs that they love, they, they love coming to work, you know? That is unbelievable. I love that, Tan. What's also kind of a rock cool, obviously, guys, those of you guys TRM right now, guys, is that Tanny is so impeccable and important and key. When a client comes in TRM, they always hear Tanny as a second voice. I'm the first voice, Tanny's the second voice. And it's almost like this is this, this angle of like, you know, I'm almost at the front person call, get, you know, I'll get on a call. Tanny comes in, obviously kind of welcomes into the TRM, shows them the experience, provides them this like reassurance of why they're in this family of TRM and then keeps with them in the nurturing sequence, basically the whole, the whole months and years to come, Tan, correct? Yes. And so Matt talks about, okay, let's, I mean, 
Matthew, you are such a heart-based person. So you're talking to them about, let's get you making money. So you love what you do and you have time with your family. I get in on a call and I'm, I'm like, what do you want deep in, like, what do you want? Like, my question is, if you, once you get there, what is it going to look like? What is your passion? What is, you know, let's say you're making all the money and you get there. What's going to help you get out of bed? You know, like Ross's favorite saying, if it doesn't light you up, it won't get you up. I love that because at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's not just about money. It's the money gives you the freedom to do what you want. But I want to know, like some people will say, I want to do, I, I want to impact the youth in certain communities, or I want to, like Jeff says, he wants to open up um, a camp for kids that have the same brittle bone disease he has so that they can go to camp. Um, like, what is it that gets you really excited that's bigger than just yourself? That to me is what I like to remind people of, you know? What do you think, Tan, is like one of the most important things in a client experience? Ah, well, I think the most important, oh, there's so many, I'm not sure where to start, but I was thinking this morning when I woke up that when you do a sales call, it can be very intimidating. Like the thought of our clients getting on a sales call is like, oh my God, what am I going to say? What am I going to do? And this morning I was thinking, what if every time you got on a call with someone, your job was just to impact them in that moment, bring mm -hmm. them joy, make them feel heard understood, accepted, listened to, that's what a client wants. I mean, there's so much information out in the world right now on the internet. Like you can get anything you want. You can get free exercises, you can get, but is anybody listening to your exact situation? Is anybody understanding? And that's what people need. They need to be listened to. They, especially now, like going through what we're going through in these last couple of years is such a disconnect that our clients want to know, man, Matthew and Tammy, they, they really get us. We're not just, a, you know, it's not just, you know, like a cookie cutter thing. Here's how it is. And that's why we have like our coaching. That's why, you know, we coach them two times a month because we want to tell them the foundation. But you want to get in there and say, OK, let's talk about you specifically. What's your niche? So for me, it's like I want to look at that client and really, you know what? My favorite thing is when I get on a call with someone and they cry. Oh, my gosh. Then I know that they 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 trust me enough to share their deepest their mm -hmm. deepest feelings. And that's what, that's what I want. I want them to know that I have their back. We have their back. That's what people need. You know, oh, I love that 10, you know, what's beautiful about that is there's so many other programs and things out there in the world, whether it's fitness, you know, entrepreneurship, whatever in different fields of, of industry. And one thing I've realized, obviously when you came on board to your, it's funny because when you first came to your, you actually came on board for bookkeeping. Actually it was, it wasn't even for client experience, which kind of is funny by the way. <laughs> I snuck um, in there. <laughs> Yeah, and, and we like transferred you over to a different level. <laughs> and what's so kind of funny is you guys, when you, those of you guys in TRM right now, obviously, or, or new to TRM, is when you hear Tanny or see Tanny on a one on one call or, or even just in general in a break room, whatever, basically on a call in general, you'll notice her playfulness, which obviously is one of her strengths. What that does, it keeps our community very fun and engaging, which I, we obviously we, we know is very important for client retention. But also client lifetime value extends because people feel like they're part of a, a family, a community that is beyond just the money obviously is important, but connection and community is literally as important, if not more important, because that drives the other part. Correct, Tan? Oh, it's so true. And what's so interesting is, so our program, 12 weeks, and anybody that comes to our program has the recordings for life. But people go through it several times because even though they have the recordings and they can do it. But it's the team people want. And, you know, especially as an entrepreneur, we are all we're, you know, some of us, we're we're parents. So we're taking care of our spouse. We're taking care of our children. We're taking care of our clients. We're taking care of everybody. When we get on a TRM call, people are taking care of us. And we need that. Like we need someone to say, I'm going through the same thing. And oh, my gosh, I can't believe this. And because you're the only one that hears it. So I love that. And some people in the team have said, you know what, it's the one call a week that lifts me up like the trm helps me to get through the week and and reminds me of my goals because sometimes we can get stuck in that just survival thing so you know you're talking about customer um customer experience and i really believe in the touch points and we talked about this when i worked at the hotel so um when you're working at a hotel, you want to look at the client experience at like in touch points how many times do you get an opportunity to wow your client or not even wow but where the client says this is the place i want to stay 
I mean, it starts right from the booking. And then when they call and they, they have a reservation and how smoothly does it go? So if, if you make a call and you're booking it and it feels like a recording and the person's just na 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 na, you're like, oh God, what kind of service are they gonna give you? So um, even to the point where when they walk into the hotel, what is the smell? What is the scent? Mm. What does the front door look like? When they walk in, how do they feel? That's all about how the client feels. When they look at the website, are they confused or do they feel like they really listen? They really get me. They made it simple. Um, you know, when they walk in the door, they, is the front desk clear, inviting? It, like, is every step of the way simply guided oh. and done in a way that the client feels like they really thought about my needs. They really thought about what I need as, as a person. And I trust that they are going to take good care of me. So if up to that point, this client has had excellent, excellent service, they get to the front desk. The person behind the desk is not on their phone. They're not talking to somebody else. They are literally looking at you smiling and they are making you feel like we are grateful you are here. That's the truth. We are grateful. Like at a hotel or, or for us, we are grateful. When I am on a call with someone, if they weren't here, I wouldn't have the job. Yeah. And it's just such a, it's such a gift for me to be able to help people. So let's say you're at the hotel and everything's gone perfect. Now you get to your room. You get to your room and something's wrong. One little thing's wrong. There's no toilet paper, whatever. If everything up to that point has been excellent, that client will call down and say, you know what? I hate to bother you, mm. but everything's been so excellent up to now. But I just noticed that I don't have toilet paper. Oh, no problem. We'll take care of it right away. That client is like, you know, they know that we've done so much work and we made one mistake. Yeah. But imagine the client experience if everything up to that point was difficult. Mm. By the time they get to the room, they're like, you know what? This is just crap. This has been a horrible experience up to now. Now I'm, as a manager, I'm not consoling the no toilet paper. I'm consoling the, the 10 steps that we screwed up, not actually building trust with the client. So that's what I feel is so important. And in regards to with TRM, as not as me, but as our clients, when they're, when they're bringing in, when they're finding people to work with, it's like everything matters. Everything from how you send a text message, make sure when the person, like, make sure that they feel uplifted when they get it. Take that extra moment to say, mm -hmm. I see that you did this. That's fantastic. And that is the special touch that doesn't cost any money. The TRM touch, Tam. Yes. And it's just because we really want them to succeed and we want them to know that we see you succeeding, right? I love that. What's so unique about the Tan Tamaister is that I'm calling her Tamaister because obviously I, I have like four different names for Tanny by the just so you guys know. <laughs> Tan Meister. Um, what's funny about that is Tanny is so right because many times we all get caught up in this, and I'm almost I'm, I'm a prime example of that when I first began to I'm Tanny obviously knows this as well, is we're so caught up in like getting all this like people in as fast as we possibly can. And then we forget about what they're experiencing from that three, six, and twelve month period, which actually is so critical because when a client comes in and experiences you for the first time, whether you're online coach, in-person trainer, a TRM member, whatever industry you're in, like Tanny mentioned, the hotel, every small thing makes a difference. So that's what we always say in TRM, off offline, online experience is important. So you're kind of incorporating maybe a sales process with more automation. And you're also incorporating more of an offline where Tanny comes in or someone on your team comes in or a team member on your coach comes in. And there's also a touch point in that process. You're getting both aspects to really get multiple layers in the client experience, right? Which is so important, whether it's a text, a video, a phone call, an email, a Facebook group like, or a post approval, or uh, a win share on a TRM 10K call, or invite to a platinum call. Like all these small things matter. As Tani mentioned, that's one of the things mo most people forget is they forget a client experience, which actually is the cheapest way for you to grow your business because you're enhancing retention months and you're enhancing lifetime value, which doesn't cost you any money except just, you know, being more strategic with your client experience process. Right, Tenmeister? Oh, absolutely. And, you know, the beautiful part about being real with your clients and really, you know, like, is that when they're struggling, they share it with you. So when you have clients that disappear and they don't give you feedback, you haven't created an opportunity for them to share and feel safe. Mm. So even with clients in the fitness industry, you want to be working with a client where you really know what, what's going on. So if they ghost you for a couple of weeks, you call them and say, you know what, this isn't about your workout. This is about what's going on. I, I, I want to know because you hired me to help you. 
And it's as much of a mental game as it is a physical game. So tell me what's going on. Let me help you. So by doing that at the beginning, you're establishing a rapport. So that client knows you're not saying, hey, let's work out because I want your money. You're saying, hey, let's work out because I want you to succeed. And of course, there's an exchange. There's an exchange of, of time and money. Of, of course, that's happening. But it's same with TRM. It's the fact that we don't take all of the clients that apply for us. That's another thing is that there's some clients that aren't ready. There's some clients that we know they're not going to show up. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? We, it's not that we don't want them. It's just that they may not be ready. And so it's really frustrating. We want to set people up for success. So if they're not ready to do it, they either, you know, whatever the case is, it's like we have some other steps that we can take. Like, let's start our kickstart program so you can get your feet wet and, and gradually. But the whole idea is we want you to thrive. We want to see you holding that 10K plaque and you are so freaking excited that you did it. And it's not about making 10K. It's about here's my favorite thing is when people say, you know what? I get to drive my child to school now because I fixed my schedule so I have time with my kids. Or I took a week off last week and my income didn't go down. Oh my gosh. That is like, and those are the wins that we love to hear. Now, if we hadn't talked that kind of talk, they wouldn't be sharing that. The only share they'd be sharing is I made this much money. And the yeah. thing is with this industry and with any industry as an entrepreneur, you make money, but all of a sudden when you level up, you dip because now you're hiring more people, you're training. So you're not always at that level. So what if you dip under 10,000, all of a sudden you feel like you're a failure? No, we know that there's way more successes in there. There's way more things in there. And so, you know, but I love so much to take the person at the beginning and help them. And even like at the two month mark that I see they're struggling, I reach out and say, what's going on? How can we help? How can we support you? Because I truly am like so blessed to be on people's journey and really, really experience the highs and lows and everything. It's absolutely my pleasure to do that. I'm getting goosebumps, Tammy. I'm, getting <laughs> goosebumps. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like this is so true because we're so passionate about client experience. Like you and I both, I'm kind of like this, like, you know, when I first met you uh, about three years ago, I was the workaholic guy that wanted to work, you know, just 24 hours, like, you know, go all day long. And like, you know, goes, you know, that was, and you kind of like have helped pull me into like Matt, you know, still be that guy, go out there and, you know, work the business, but don't forget about the client experience, which that when you came in TRM kind of slowly over time, we sort of like integrated those principles and mod, you know, we're always modifying, making them better that we never stopped doing that. Right. Never. I do. love that. You, I love that you said that because something that's really remarkable that I've never experienced before with a leader is every module you look at it and you change it like you literally look at it and say is there anything i can add to this you never get complacent like you don't get me wrong i don't want you to change the modules all the time because the information is so good but every now and then you go hey i got a different example or something but you and we literally get feedback from every single person that takes the course and say what can we do better and we've we've changed it along we're in group 18 now we've changed it where we had we didn't have breakout rooms before, whereas people weren't talking and now they talk and people are building relationships and sharing stories. And I love that so much. And but it, it takes a lot of extra work to do that. But that just shows how much you care about the client. Really, like, you know, they really Thanks, love Tim. it. I appreciate and that. We also had sorry. We also had a party. This was so cool. During COVID, we're like, we can't meet these people. Like normally, Matthew would have like a discovery day where, or not a discovery day, um, uh, mastermind. mastermind where they get together, but they couldn't. So Matthew put together this party. Tell them about the party, Matthew. The party was exactly one year ago, Tanmeister. Was Actually, it? Yeah, it was one year oh, ago yeah, because that's when Alvin Brown came on board because he was, he was like, I know Elf like two years from the summit back in the day in Toronto. I was like, yeah, I'm come to the, you know, the virtual party. We'll have, you know, it was actually a DJ. We had a DJ there for like, what was it? Two hours or hour and a half or two hours, something like that. We yeah. had like costumes on, lights kind of going on, cracking jokes. We had all had our drinks there, having drinks, you know, talking and cracking jokes. Listen, DJ, basically live on a virtual party. And that's when Alvin Brown's like, I want to be a part of this thing. Yeah. You know, and he's been a part of some of the biggest coaching programs in the world, like Jay Abraham. Um, Dan Kennett, all the biggest marketing guys, he was a part of that. And he's like, guys, I, I believe you guys are the next level. So he's like, he, you know, he's you know, one of our leaders in TRM. He's one of our core leaders. And it's so cool to see like veterans who have been at the yeah. game for over 20 years. Like, like he's seen everything in the fitness world for the last 20 some years, Alvin Brown. Yes. And to come and say, you know what? I love Tanny. I love the experience. I love our, your team, the culture. Like that just shows 
like the effort we put into the experience, but it's so important to us because we want our clients to feel like they are part of a family, not just a number or we want your payment at the end of the month. You know what I mean? Yeah. That kind of thing. It's so true. And that party was so fun because so here we are on Zoom. Everybody's, you know, everybody's on the screen. There's dogs, there's cats, <laughs> there's people with their kids. We even had one guy who was Aaron, who was at the pool. We get to see him like jump into his pool and then he comes back. Like it was so cool. And people literally just just hung out. And sometimes we weren't even talking. We're just looking at each other like you would be if you were in a really noisy club and you can't talk. And the music's going and we're just laughing. And 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 I had my feather boa and we're like it was the most playful fun thing but the fact is it just you know Matthew took the time and and spent money to have this go because I mean we we really want to have fun with the people and and you know we miss gathering but you know it's it's more than just teaching it's really about you know, and today's such a good day because today is Bell's um, like mental health day where if you post the Bell um, the Bell what's it called talk it's about talking about mental health. If you post that today, it's about supporting people with mental health. And, you know, that's so important right now with the pandemic is, is helping our clients to really feel supported. So yeah. customer service to me is having a conversation with a friend and really listening, you know. Oh, Tan, that's so, that's so darn true. It's just so funny you mentioned that because from the virtual party to like TRM to like Platinum to Elite, all this kind of thing. It's so funny because I think, you know, one of the things I've learned in my journey in, in working with you now in the customer experience is that, you know, when I first began, I think your head was spinning because I was like, Tanny, this new idea, this new idea, what about this over here? And you, you've learned me at a deep level now because I'm, I'm like, but now I've realized this year is all about, for TRM, all about three main things, metrics, multiply, and client experience, because we know if client experience is impeccable, which we, I, I believe we have, we have one of the best in the, in the world when it comes to our field, and we're going to get better with it over time, is clients, they feel like they're at home. And if I feel I'm at, I'm at home, I don't want, you know, I want to keep in the party. I want to meet the new the new faces, you know, the old faces, the veterans that have a have a good time. Bring my lattes, you know, um, you know, and then talk about success, but talk about challenges, you know, yes. or talk about our wins, whether they're personal, professional wins. And but also like I love to have fun, also crack jokes because to me, cracking jokes, even when you're building a business, it's just like you. Why can't you? Oh, uh, it's right? so important, and you know, especially in this industry, in the fitness industry. If you scroll on Instagram, you see everybody looking their very best, mentally, physically, everything. Like they're showing the best of the best. So sometimes like you get on a call and people are like, people say, well, I don't want to share this because I'm struggling because everybody's talking about how amazing things are. And if you think everybody is amazing and you're the only one failing, then you get really discouraged. So it's so important when people come on and say, you know what? I just had like, I just had a crappy week. It just wasn't working. So then we talk about how could we do it differently next time? And so it's super important. And you know what, Matthew, I want to mention something that I've never had this experience in my life. And I've worked for a lot of companies. You care so much about the client experience that you have started a communication group with our team so that we can learn how to communicate better as a team and and therefore teach our clients how to communicate with them. so it's the most amazing thing and even at my age i am learning so much about communication and how like we talked about how to give feedback to each other mm -hmm. what companies talk about so here's normally what happens you're working you have a problem with somebody or or not even a problem but there's an issue and all of a sudden the boss says just figure it out and then you guys either figured out or you never talk to each other again. And all of a sudden, everybody in the office is like, and then there's, you know, because now there's all this backstabbing because there's there's no platform for people to actually have the discussion. Mm -hmm. So people are still frustrated because of whatever topic. And so we're learning how to do this and people aren't taught. So I challenge everybody listening. If you're part of a team and there's any struggles is don't tell them to figure it out on their own you know, figure out a way to teach, like teach your team how to communicate and how to give feedback. Cause I'll tell you, it makes work so much more fun. Now you don't have this because that ruminating about a problem is so hard. You know, it's hard work though, but let me tell you, it's uh, so Matthew, I want to thank you because I've never had anyone actually do that. And it's remarkable. Tenny, thank you so much. If I can actually share, because because it was actually because uh, a gift from you and it's so funny because um when we go when we go through moments of like growth moments where, where you know discomfort challenge in a good way 
And I, and it's funny because you've allowed me to actually, even though you're in the company, you're teaching me things, even though, you know, like you're part of the team, like, even though I'm the leader of the company, I'm still learning from you and Jamie and Alex and the rest of the team. I'm still learning because if I feel if I'm not learning, I'm not growing. Now I want to go back for a second because two months ago when we got the communication process with Alex, it was the most uncomfortable thing I've gone through in my, I think my company years in my life. Like it was, I was coming to the, oh, I actually want to skip the first call. I was nervous as heck. Um, I was, my stomach was ready to puke, but I was like, just dig in there, go in because you know, I want to, I want to, I, I believe in this family, you know, and I want, I want to be better for Tanny and better for the team, better for the collective. And two months later, I feel like th this whole like evolution of me has come out of me. And it all came from a challenge, you know, that, that I accepted and took ownership on that. I feel that most entrepreneurs and me included years ago when I was younger, wouldn't accept, I would almost like deflect it, you talk, deflect it or push it aside or leave the, the dark room because you just hide in the closet. I wanted to expose all the crap, you know, and say, how can I become better as a leader for my team? Cause I really freaking do care about you and the team. Like the, the team is like my, is like my, my family. And, but what I've realized is if you come in TRM thinking about your, only yourself, it won't last very long. No. When you come in TRM thinking about we and a team, you will last as long as you want to. You will be part of this team forever. I've realized that that's the boundary that I've realized that I have to grow myself into is when you come in this family, that we, the, the team in general, or as a client, or eventually as a leader or part, it, it, it like our best clients are the ones usually that have kids. To be frank with everybody, heart-centered people who usually have gone through having at least one kid, whether you're married or not, doesn't matter. You've gone through with having one child. You've been training for, you know, with, with your business for three to five to six years, but you, you've got a purpose beyond just the dollar bills. Yeah. You know, so I don't want to get off track your town, but I'm, you got me all passionate now. So I'm, gonna, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm like, I'm just going on a tangent. My goodness. <laughs> well, Matthew and I could talk for hours without even a breath in between. So, but you know, you're absolutely right about that. And it's, it's, there's been many jobs I've left because of that where i'm i'm in an environment where it's so toxic because these conversations aren't ha aren't being being done and then there's all this stuff going on and you come to work and the energy is just horrible and i'm like you know what i can't do that because i'm like heart-based i want to share and if i have to shut everything down so it's it's a big thing and and even like in this industry where it's hype 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 a lot of the times Yep. You know, it's like, let's not, let's be positive. Let's stay positive. Let's do everything, you know? And it's like, th there's a difference between being positive, like, yes, being positive, you know, yes, not ruminating about stuff all the time, but we also have to, I always say, Matt, like sitting in the mud, you know, when something's difficult, instead of saying, instead of saying, you know what, I'm just, I'm not going to do, I'm not going to think about it right now. I'm going to be positive. It's like, no, what is this thing? Let's think about it. Let's work it through because that's how you grow. So that's a, it's a really tough thing, but a lot of people will um, either like they'll have their addictions, they'll drink, or even just work out more or work more or do whatever to distract themselves from that. But until you fix whatever that is, you can't move on. So it's a really big thing. And it's also what we do to help our clients. So when we learn that ourselves, when we look at our client that's struggling and the client's saying, but when I see you on Instagram and you look so perfect, I know that I feel like a failure. And you go, yeah, but you know what? You didn't see yesterday. You didn't see me in the fetal position crying, sucking my thumb going, oh my gosh, my life sucks. You only saw, you know, um, an hour before when I was feeling great. So it's the whole idea of let's be honest, let's be open and let's, let's support each other in that emotional journey as well. That's what's, that's customer service is when you really look at the person, you know, the inside, not just the outside. What's so beautiful about that, Tani, is that, you know, the client experience starts with like each of us, like start, start with me, because if I didn't accept it and want to take it in and like really go to the next level in a client experience, then none of you guys would have. Right. Right. So I've realized before an owner of a company or a coach can take their team or a CEO of a company can like embrace this sort of next level in their company. They've got to accept it all in or else it's not going to work. You can bring in the best person, but if you're not on board, your team is just going to think it's baloney. They're not, they're not going to get, take you serious. So those of you guys listening right now, they're, they're more of like, you know, head focus as well as a heart focused. I want to challenge you to kind of look at both avenues because you have to have, you have to use both to be successful for sure. You can't be heart always, but if you can balance between like measuring your client retention and lifetime value and incorporate a beautiful heart focused client experience that takes care of the clients, gets them results, make them, makes them feel valued and impacted, takes care of their family and gets them 
the company that they want to build, you're winning. Everyone's winning because, you know, they're getting results and they're also feeling fulfilled at the same time. You're winning all around, right, Tan? Yes. And not only are you winning, but when I, when I talk to someone that says their whole business was built on referrals, I know that their customer service is fantastic because, because when people love what you do so much that they have to tell their friends, that's when you know that you're going above and beyond. So mm -hmm. for me, you know, we've talked about this before where how much money do you invest in your business? Like you got to pay for all of these people. But, you know, like at the beginning, I fooled you and told you I was a bookkeeper when I'm not because I knew that I wanted, I knew what I wanted. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> But I slowly kind of crept in. I said, you know, I really like talking. Can I just talk to people? <laughs> <laughs> but I just know the importance of it. But a lot of people, it's, but you're right. It's a fine thing. Like you still have to say, okay, this is how much the program costs. This is how much we're going to invest. So that's really important. But to not forget the touch points, to not forget that, because that's, that makes the difference. Otherwise they can just go free online and get some kind of program. So, yeah. Tanny, it has been an absolute pleasure to have this chat with you. We can, we can obviously go for another a half an hour to an hour, probably longer. We're actually going to cut it there for now. We're already over time, which is fantastic. But Tanny, it was an absolute pleasure as always. Any last thoughts for you, Tanny Meister, you want to share? Any last thoughts? No, I just recommend people to try and have more fun doing their work because um, – I have to tell one story. So five, I don't know, maybe four years ago, I actually took a year course in, on web design. So I'm actually a graphic designer, web designer. And there was days when I was so struggling to do the assignment, I couldn't focus. And all I would do is say, you know what? I chose this. Let's have fun with it. How can I make this fun? How can I make this process fun? How can I infuse my fun? And you know me and fun, like fun is such an important thing, especially for entrepreneurs because we're so focused on making money that how can we how can we infuse fun in it? So when I get to that point, I say, how can I make it fun? And then it would be better. So even for everybody else that's making sales calls and their business, they're waking up and they're like, oh, my God, I got to count reps again. How can you make that moment fun? So you can get through the day and really enjoy yourself. That's, you know, like stop focusing so much on the money, focus on having fun and enjoying and how to bring joy to everyone. And then the money will be the result of that. You are incredible. Tan. that was absolutely fantastic. Tanny. Thank you so much for your time today, your tidbits, your laughs, your jokes, and all your insight, because you are amazing. Tanny. thank you so very much. Thank you, Matthew. I appreciate you inviting me. So guys, you can take a follow of us guys on, on basically term, term, uh, at trm.com. I can't even talk today. So there you go, guys. Follow us from there. Screenshot if you guys like the episode for you guys. Other than that, guys, wish you guys a fantastic day. Thank you, Tanny. Have an awesome day, guys, and take care. Bye.